<laughs> it feels weird to say hello at the beginning of all of these. Like, I feel like I should be saying something other than hello. Like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. So, hi. Hi. And welcome to the Sub Pop Podcast, Season 2, Episode 3. I am Arwen Nix, and I am here with Alyssa Atkins. We are your hosts, and we are, of course, talking to you from the murder closet. The new murder closet. Of course. Where else would we be? Yes. This is... This is where we live. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are going to bring you stories from time that Arwen spent on the ground in Portland, Oregon. And by on the ground, that's not like I really got into some Boots deep on the recording yeah. kind of things. Like I just went to Portland and ended up sitting on the ground with men. And um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the men that I sat on the ground with are Hutch Harris of The Thermals and Kyle Kraft of Kyle Kraft. And I'm making a point of saying on the ground because I remember Arwen coming back and her just happened, like casually kind of saying, oh yeah, and then we had, and for both interviews, we ended up sitting on the ground. And I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> Why? Like what happened? What went wrong that you ended up sitting on the ground? No, that's true. I do remember you being like showing <laughs> like, some concern, uh, being like, oh, are you okay? You were on the ground? And yeah. What I horrible mean, thing happened that you ended up sitting on the ground, which says more about my attitudes of sitting on the ground than. Sure. You know, the reality of just sitting on the ground. I guess. One thing that I really adore um, is Alyssa's ability to turn a phrase. And the way that she described to me why she hates sitting on the ground is that she doesn't need her face to be any closer to your dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes me a lot of fun on picnics. So, you know, go ahead, invite me along. I'm really, really pretty lighthearted about the whole sitting on the ground thing. But anyway, luckily, it was Arwen talking to these guys. Cause well, and there wasn't like, they're just, that was just how it played out. It's not like I called them <laughs> up and was like, hey, can I come sit on the sidewalk with you and talk to you for the Sun Pop podcast? That's just <laughs> where we ended up going. So for Hutch, he was about to play a show he had just done sound check he had to go back in in a little bit he only had like a brief window of time and couldn't be too far from the venue and <laughs> it was loud inside and it was loud right outside so we were just we were just walking and we ended up like sitting on a grassy knoll and I'm not sure if it was like a law office <laughs> or an abortion clinic that we were next to but we were on the on ground in lawn. Portland on their lawn and there was like all this there was like a five lane street next to us so forgive me that you can hear traffic in the background I like it. it it adds texture to it if I would have driven by though I would have thought you guys were injured <laughs> like, oh no are you okay I mean it probably from a distance it probably looked like I was about to hit Hutch with like a a, a bully stick or something <laughs> with your is, that what, is that what it's called or is a that a dog toy stick. I remember uh, that from Bob Dylan songs. Like a, <laughs> yeah, like a baton, like a police baton, because I think that's what the microphone looks like. <laughs> so it probably just looked like I was like prodding him. <laughs> well, that's all great, too. I like that very much. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah, but these Arwen and Hutch, good sports. And the reason you wanted to go down to Portland was because there was, well, there's so many good things to talk about with Portland and its connection with Sub Pop. There's many, many fine artists that Sub Pop has worked with throughout the years. Yeah, and it's that so close, so far city where it's totally. like, you know, on a good day in traffic, it's only three hours to get there, which almost never happens That's anymore. That's not anymore. That's not true anymore, So it's like five hours to get there. <laughs> um, but there are so many artists that Sub Pop has worked with down there, and I really wanted to talk to Kyle. And then one of the reasons that we had talked about talking to Hutch for a while, but then he wrote this essay about what it feels like, about how he kind of figured out that he was standing in his own way from enjoying a lot of the music, like the new music in the scene that he's in and going to shows and how seeing younger artists, he was kind of like bitter and mad at their success. And like, he couldn't, he couldn't enjoy it. He couldn't let himself enjoy it. And then when he realized he was standing in his own way, what that felt like and how he got himself to a place where he could kind of get over himself in yeah. that way and let himself enjoy his music and other people's music more again. Yeah, and I think that that's not unique to just even the music community. I mean, that's being an artist or in your field for you know a while, like just feeling like, where's my place now? You know, I think that there's somewhere in between that like, get off my lawn <laughs> and the youth is the truth kind of mentality. Right. I think that it's great to have like some wisdom and people who have experience, whether, like you said, in the music scene or whatever their field of work is, it's great to have that experience, but you can't let that experience like calcify you. Right. 
And if you do start feeling mm, threatened or annoyed, then it's time to, like Hutch said in his article, kind of look at yourself and be like, well, what do I have to offer this besides my... <laughs> I don't know. We were talking about how jealousy is actually kind of a funny emotion if you don't do anything with it, like in terms of like it's ridiculous. I don't mean do something with it, like act on your rage or jealousy. But I mean like move on from it. If you don't move on from it, it's just pretty, pretty petty. Well, and you don't want (laughs) you don't want it to hinder you from creating. You don't want to be like, oh, I guess my time doesn't exist anymore, I better step out of the way. It's this idea that we can all exist together. It's a great essay. It's really, really hilarious. Hutch is a hilarious writer. He writes a ton for the Talk House. We'll link to his essays and the show notes. He also is a stand-up comedian. Yeah. Recently. Recent. Relatively recently. <laughs> like recently. Recent stand-up comedian. Yeah. Long-time musician, recent stand-up comedian. That's true. And, um... He, yeah, he's worth listening to. Oh, and I guess the other <laughs> worth thing. Worth listening to. Sorry, that sounds like faint praise. <laughs> I actually meant it, but sometimes when I say things I mean, it sounds more sarcastic than when I'm trying to be sarcastic. And for those oh, who don't don't know, The Thermals is a band that Sub Pop put out there. First album. Their first album. We've They've had been around for 14 years. We worked with them for a lot of those years. Hardly Art is actually a line that is cribbed from a Thermals song. Yep. So thanks for that. Thanks yeah. again. Um, and Hutch had a birthday this month. So happy belated birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of getting older. Um, oh. So yeah, that's it. And I guess I guess we'll just go into it. Yeah. We The first thing we're talking about is that essay, in case it doesn't make sense. Awesome. It's kind of like scene politics. It's like, why do, what are the reasons that I personally get jealous of other bands? And a lot of it was just like, I'm 40 now. And when I see bands that are like 21 doing really well, I'm like, fuck those guys, you know? (laughs) And it just, you know, it just, it just comes down to jealousy. I, <laughs> and what I wrote is that it was, I didn't like go on some like soul searching journey, like why do I do, you know, how am I going to do this? I really just like started letting go of that feeling. Cause I, you know, like once I started hearing all these bands I like now in Portland, like these bands are great. I know that in the past I wouldn't have liked them just for like reasons that have nothing to do with the music. And I, but I really like what I'm listening to. And then I feel just that the kind of like, that positive feeling that I was having just kind of snowballed. Um, and I started, the the more I, I let those negative feelings go, just the better I started feeling. And the more I was like enjoying music and listening to like a lot of music again. So are you going to shows more often now that you're not angry at these kids oh no i still always would go to shows um you just go to shows and be mad yeah (laughs) or i would just be like really like overly critical i think a lot of times on the surface i would be saying the opposite i'd be like oh this band's great but like deep down be like oh fuck those you know i hate those guys And this is the thing, and you know what? I think like a lot of it is, I don't want to be that guy as I get older. I don't want to be the bitter old man. God reached his hand down from the sky. He blooded the lamb and he set it afire. How many years ago did you decide that you were going to try stand up? Uh, It's been like a year and a half now. It's Mr. Hutchins! Thank you, Jenna. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage Hutch Harris. Real loud for Hutch Harris. Please welcome to the stage Hutch Harris. I, uh, I play in a rock band called The Thermals. Thanks to my two fans for showing up. Why 
did you decide to do it? I wanted to for a long time. Like, I remember writing routines. Like, when Kathy and I were working on Now We Can See, like, we went to this, like... We rented this house at the coast, and we, like, wrote all these songs. But then, like, at night, I would just, like, work on routines. So that's, like, uh, seven years ago. No, no, it's, like, nine years ago, right? Uh, something like that. Um, and then... You know, for years before I went up, I would just go, you know, I already went to a lot of comedy shows. I started going to like all the local shows here and going to open mics all the time. And then still just like, I probably went to open mics for like a year and a half and I still wouldn't get up. Do you remember the first joke you told on stage? I made, I was joking about orgasmic birth. Right, I love your face right now. <laughs> Thank you, Allison. Great set. <laughs> now back to a white guy in a hoodie. <laughs> We've got quotas to fill here. <laughs> As soon as I like just did it once, then I felt like I had kind of broken through and I wasn't like scared to do it. I would still get like super nervous, but I wasn't like scared to do it, like scared to sign up and go do it anymore. I would think, you know, it's like anything else to get good at it. You just have to do it hundreds, you know, thousands of times. Yeah, a lot of times when people tell me, oh, I'm like a failed musician or a failed comedian, I'm usually like, well, not, you know, people usually give up before they fail. I don't know like what what a lot of people think their failure is. Usually people just quit doing something uh, because I don't know because they're not they feel like they don't have enough success. Do you ever feel like anyone reacts to you like that's not what you're supposed to be doing? Like no you're Hutch from the thermals. You're a musician. Stay in your corner. Yes. And that was like, like knowing that people were going to respond that way. Like I, I knew that already before I got up. And that's one of the things that was in my head that was keeping me from getting up. Cause I was like, I'm known as this. And like, and like, is this going to damage my reputation as a musician? Are people going to think less of me? And are people going to think like, Oh yeah, you don't, yeah, yeah. You don't belong here. You already have your thing. Yeah. Like you said, like stay, you know, stay over there. And that, yeah, that was in my head. And, and that made me feel like really self-conscious about doing it. Um, but the scene here in Portland has been really supportive. And I will go to LA like kind of frequently and do comedy like four or five times a year, maybe for the past, like, you know, this year and last. And I find it to be really supportive. So there are people who I know who like feel like, eh, you should, like, why are you doing this? I don't know, there's a thing in, I don't know if musicians are the same. There's definitely a thing in comedy where, like, a lot of comedians think, like, comedy is mine. Like, like they have some kind of ownership of comedy. Um, which, I don't know, I never really felt that way about music. I mean, so many people do both. I mean, so many people do music. Like, I never felt like... Except for when you were bitter for all those years? Well, that's, like, for different reasons. <laughs> I, I never felt like... <laughs> I never felt like music was mine, and those people shouldn't be musicians. I just wish that they weren't doing well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I should be, yeah, after, you know, all the weird, like, jealousy and weird feelings that I have about music should transfer perfectly into comedy. <laughs> It's nice to hear a guy who spent some time thinking about how to avoid being an angry old man. <laughs> Put some energy into how to avoid. 
I the feel- natural impulse of angry old man. <laughs> I mean, no, I think you're right. I just like I think that something that is occurring to me now as we're taping this is that so many of the interviews this season have to do with people trying something new. Yeah. So a lot of these so many of the people that we're talking to are, of course, as one would expect in this podcast, musicians, but they're musicians and something. And they're artists. They're artists. And And they're willing to be like, oh, you know, I I've never done this before, but I'm going to learn this new thing. I'm going to try this new experience. I'm going to put myself out there in this new vulnerable way. Which I can totally relate to because that's me talking into this microphone. (laughs) I mean, that's me trying to make a podcast and talk into a microphone when that's the last thing I would have thought I would have been open to doing. So, I mean, I think that that is so important at a certain point in your life if you're feeling like stuff is not resonating the same way or people are getting more of what you wanted then you need to put yourself out there and be willing to try new things like that's how you keep from getting all crabby and (laughs) (laughs) bitter or something i think participate right yes and speaking of trying new things here is hopefully some instruction on how to try buying yourself a new thing from the mega mart oh that's so good hey thanks (laughs) We got there. <laughs> uh, what is your name, first and last? My name is Nick Duncan. What do you do here at Sub Pop? Radio promotion. What does that mean? Uh, I get our bands on the radio, hopefully. Hey, good job. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Stuart Fletcher is sick today. He's okay. here, but he has a sore throat. <laughs> so he can't do the Mega Mart ad. Okay. So you're going to be our Mega Mart star today. All right. Are you up for it? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what the Mega Mart is? It's a place to buy our records. Is it like an actual place? It has been. Is it now? No. What is it? It's an online store. Yes. Where you can buy our records. Do you know the web address? It's okay to say no. No, I don't. It's, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah please do. It's shop. I think it's <laughs> shop.megamart.com. Or maybe it's shop.subpop.com. I think it's shop. If you Google Subpop Megamart, you can get there. <laughs> You'd think we'd make it easier for people to buy our records. Oh, you would think. Um, what record should people buy? What's a recent record that you think people should go there and buy? Should check out the new record from Level Up. What's it called? Return to Love. Tell me something about Level Up that listeners wouldn't know just from listening to the record. Um, two of the members run the record label Double Double Whammy, um, which put out a bunch of other great records, folks like Frankie Cosmos and Mitski and a lot of other good Brooklyn bands. So after you're done at the Mega Mart, maybe so you Maybe can stop go. by the Double Double Whammy store and pick up some <laughs> other good stuff. We are bad at commercials yeah. here at Sub Pop, but... Um, you should check out Double Double Whammy and buy the Level Up record, right? Right. Do it. It's good. Anything else? Can you, the hat that you're wearing right now, you're wearing a Sub Pop hat. Uh-huh. Do you know if you can get that at the Mega Mart? I think so. Forest Green, Sub Pop logo, Snapback. And then everyone can look like ducks. That's what everyone wants, right? <laughs> good job on that Mega Mart ad, by Thank the way. you. Thanks. They're a pleasure to make. Well, I really like listening to them. Good. I did forget something, though, about Hutch. One of our connections to him is that recent connections. Mm -hmm. He came into the office filming a segment for Jonah Ray's uh, new CISO episode. Uh, Yeah, for his show Hidden America. Yeah, yeah. So this is the one where... So we're going to actually be talking to Jonah Ray later in the season, and he is a pleasure but he came here his travel show films different like it's this spoof on travel shows and yeah. he films them in different cities they did one in seattle they at came, the sub pop office part of it is at sub pop yeah they come here and hutch plays the head of a&r who is tony yes so he and tony used to be hutch's a&r when tony <laughs> <laughs> was the a&r for the thermals hutch got to play him i think he enjoyed himself he Getting did a to, great job. Yes, you he should did do a great job. We'll, we'll link to that in the show notes as well. And then you can see um, the old kitchen. Oh, yeah. Up. 
But yeah, so that's all like crisscrossed of connections because yeah. there'll be in a future episode. I don't can't remember which one. It's a few episodes. We from get now. to talk to Jonah Ray, which yeah. is awesome. And then Tony's name keeps coming up. Jeez, because uh-huh. he's A&R for the Thermals and A&R for Kyle Craft. Yeah. We're about to hear from next, but actually not next because first we're gonna hear from Tony. Tony on Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of us talking about Tony, we'll let Tony talk about Tony. Oh boy. Tony Cool back on the podcast. No, 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 no. We're not making that stick. <laughs> Tony, how did you first hear about Kyle Craft? Kyle, uh, that's an interesting one. At the risk of encouraging lots of people to invade <laughs> our office, uh, he basically broke into our office one day and left a CD of his old band. He had an old band called Gash Cat. But I, I really liked it. It was um, it was it was really just really cool. He had a lot of arrangements and s- instrumentation, and his lyrics were super cool. And his voice was really distinct. And you know, and I think it was maybe almost at least six months later that he came back through. I mean, he was he would booked himself a tour. His band they were f- from Louisiana and had come through Seattle, and while they were here, invaded our lobby and left cds which and wait how long ago is this oh, this is years ago this is like maybe four years ago i want to say maybe more he wasn't 21 yet oh my god that's adorable um as i recall because i i mean maybe that's even more god because he's like 27 now oh my god it might have been like six years ago <laughs> But yeah, uh, so when the next time he came to town, I went and saw them play, and it was really great. And it was just a long time. But then, you know, he was moving around. He moved to Austin for a little while, and we actually, you know, I uh, we had an extra slot on our showcase, the Sub Pop showcase, and I invited them to play. What at South by Southwest? Yeah, yeah. So they just kind of they weren't on Sub Pop or Hardly Art, but they. I, they played our showcase anyway because I just <laughs> liked them and and they were there and I was like oh, I want to help you guys out and which was great because they ended up um, like really they made some key fans who were at our show like the uh, I think like Bob Boylan was there and he really became a big supporter of, of Kyle you know all all the way till now you know it's like five years later I guess um, but uh, yeah he and I just kept in touch and he just kept sending me songs and. Um, we kept talking about the potential of maybe working together, but Gash Cat kind of dissolved and he kept moving around and then, you know, he ended up in Portland. Um, and then this is also before we were officially working together, you know, kind of helped connect him up with the Helio Sequence guys who kind of helped, you know, helped him go back and, uh, you know, just retrack a few things and, and, and mess with some of his mixes of the stuff that he had recorded himself when he was back in Louisiana earlier that year. Um, yeah, so it's sort of just a real, I, I, it kind of feels gross to call it a courtship, but uh, <laughs> but it, I, it was. So so now Sabob has put out his record, and um, I went to Portland and talked to him, and I think he's incredibly charming. But how would you describe Kyle's personality? If someone hadn't met him, how would you describe Kyle? He's kind of baffling to me uh <laughs> because i mean well and especially right now uh being asked to to come up with that because he, you know uh, now thinking about my entire history of knowing kyle and when i first met him he was just he he came off as just the sweetest kindest most polite young man you know i had really met in forever and he is that but that kid is also a total dirty bird and <laughs> capable of getting up to all kinds of no good. <laughs> but he is still also the sweetest, uh, most thoughtful friend you could hope to have. I'm super proud to, to know the guy. So I'm recording. I have to tell you that for legal reasons. Okay. So where are we where are we going? We're going to Mountain Tabor Park. If it's open. I think it will be. Um, and, 
the... Oh, sorry, I take these speed bumps like a, a demon. Oh, God. <laughs> what? But uh, here, you have all these bands that hang out with each other and that play shows together uh, that are just really different and diverse. Like, every band from, from one to the next is just vastly different, but we're all friends and we're, we all play shows together and it's not weird, you know, it's not like... It's not like if you put a, a bill together, it has to be this like, all right, well tonight's gonna be the, yeah. the, the psych rock night or something. Just once, maybe twice. Then I can show you around. That is if you wanna come. And I can play it cool if I wasn't playing it dumb. So then that's what's that's my question then. How how do you catch an alligator? How do you, Kyle Craft, catch an alligator? Uh, one hand on the neck, one hand behind the back legs, that's it. <laughs> and hold on. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, I would go out and, and catch catch gators and snakes. and I even caught a coyote one time with my bare hands. How? I, it had a hurt leg, and I saw it down, like, running down the road. So I was, like, going down this, like, sandy road um, down by the paper mill in Natchez, Mississippi, and I was like driving I see this like dog or something up in the road I'm like oh that dog's hurt and I was the closer I get I was like oh shit that's a coyote and then like you know my teenage brain was like oh my god I could catch this coyote nurse it back to health and we'll be friends you know and so I get I, the, I, the closer I get to it it's kind of like looking back at me I don't know why it stayed on the road so long but eventually it just kind of like took off into the woods so I like slam the brakes on my jeep and hop out and just chase this coyote for like 30 minutes running through the woods but um anyway eventually I, I, I caught up to the coyote he like just stopped and 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 like hunkered down and just kind of looked at me like out of the corner of his eye like a like a dog would if it were in trouble or something you know and I was like, all right, I'm going to make this guy my friend and take care of him and, like, wrap his leg up when I get home and, like, get his leg all fixed up. And, um, and so I, like, took my shirt off and, like, threw it over his head and, like, grab, grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and was just, like, holding him like that and, like, got back to the Jeep. And for some stupid reason, I thought that, like, Oh, you know, he's fine now. I'll just put him in the passenger seat and he'll completely just ride home with me. Like, why would that work? <laughs> like, you know. I really do like the idea of what could have happened if you had taken that coyote oh, home maybe we'd still be friends maybe he'd be my, like my, my portland coyote pal you know me and him in the laundry room together uh, they had the hitchhike or it's not it wasn't a hitchhiking story it was Whenever I was leaving Portland, about to go back down to uh, to Louisiana, my my plan was to split 
uh, town and, and drive straight from Portland to, to Louisiana because there was a Mardi Gras parade I wanted to go to in, in Highland, actually. It's the Highland parade. And so I wanted to get there in time for that. And so Bremen drops off the boat a couple days before we were about to leave because he had to help his family, which is completely fine. And he was like, man, why don't you just like try and get on Craigslist and find like a ride share? But uh, sure enough, there was this there was this cat that was trying to get to Dallas. So I called him up and I was like, "Hey, man, uh, you still need a ride to Dallas?" He was like, "Yeah, man." He was like, "When are you leaving?" You know, I was like, "Tomorrow morning, like first thing." He's like two hours late trying to get like a, his last check from Applebee's or something, and uh, finally gets there. And and uh, his suitcase is the biggest suitcase I've ever seen in my entire life. It was gigantic. I, it took both of us putting it in. My hand. This is all he had. He had the suitcase and he had two huge bags, like big, like clear see-through bags of, of cereal. Like one of them was like this, some sort of like Cocoa Puffs. And the other one was like Cap'n Crunch. He, I remember him looking over at me and be like, you, mu you must think I'm really weird, don't you? And I was like, nah, man, you seem completely fine. So we start going and we're going through the gorge and he started talking about how he was like getting chased through the gorge by cops one time on his motorcycle. And then like that got into this whole, like he was under some sort of like house arrest or probation or something. And then that got into Anyway, somewhere along the way, he tells me he has two guns in his head. And so I'm like, oh my God, what? You know, so he's, he has guns and he's under some sort of house or like some sort of like trouble with the law. And I, I kind of like realize at this point, like I'm delivering this fucker to his salvation, you know, in Dallas, Texas. And this was during that giant blizzard that swept across the entire like west side of the country. So I was about to drive through this thing with this guy as my company. I'm just like, this guy's gonna kill me in my sleep. He's gonna like shoot me or something and steal my van and all my guitars in there and just sell them in Dallas or some shit, you know. But he didn't. It became like pretty evident that something really weird was going on with him. And and I noticed it the day before, but not as much as that as this day. And every time we would like stop at a um at a bathroom, he would take a while. And then when he would get back in the car, it was like he was just like a, a zombie or something, you know? Like at one of the stops, he thought I caught him. Uh, he was like, hey man, like, uh, sorry, I'm a diabetic, you know, I have to like do insulin. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then it hit me, I was like, this guy, I just caught this guy like shooting up. That's like what this is, you know? And so I was like, dang it. So I have like handguns and like heroin and like, and, and like this house arrest. But at that point it was just like, well, I gotta keep going. I can't just leave him. You know, I don't want to like, uh, you know, it wasn't like he was like a mean guy or anything. He was just like messed up. Finally, we get to, well, we're getting to Dallas. And I guess this is the point where I start kind of feeling a little more sorry for the guy. Uh, Cause like I, I asked him, you know, we were almost there and I was like, so man, like why, why Dallas? You know, cause like Dallas is, it's Dallas. Sorry, Dallas. I love you, but <laughs> um, anyway, I, I, uh, we, we start, I'm like, dude, why Dallas? And, and he's like, uh, well, I, I Googled best places to start over. And I was like, oh, damn. 
Google, you really fucked him up on that one. <laughs> I, w I was just out of there and it was the best part of the entire trip that three hours of being alone from from Dallas to Shreveport and that's pretty much it though I couldn't I couldn't get to the um I couldn't get to the parade because all the streets were blocked off and my eyes were uh you know just as red as uh as these boots as these ill skin boots I have on they I looked haggard. <laughs> I looked so bad. And um but I made it to the after party after a nap. And that was fun. I really appreciate you um, being so conscientious, giving him the heads up that you have to let him know you're recording for legal reasons. <laughs> Although I don't think you practice that around the office so much, Arwen. <laughs> you may or may not be illegally recording some of your coworkers. May or may not. Let's leave that there. Okay, but I can't. I can't walk away from this. The the, my most favorite part, there's a lot to love about that interview, but when Kyle is talking about, like, um, I think it was something like, I started getting scared, I thought he was going to kill me, but he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite, just like, <laughs> I thought I was in imminent danger, but I wasn't. Well, and what's interesting about Kyle is that he's not the kind of person who, I don't know a lot of people like Kyle. He's just this presence and I guess the best way to describe him is that he's like this for me he feels like this ageless figure because he's just like wearing a velvet suit and he has like <laughs> crazy glam rock 80s perfect hair that I love so much and just this like cowboy boots cowboy and boots and like gentlemanly southern drawl and I just he seems ageless in a way but his exploits kind of make more sense when you realize like he's not even yeah like, 30 yet yeah you know? when I when I realized that like the person who just told me that story is in their 20s it makes me feel like oh yeah that's maybe a mistake I would have made too but um <laughs> <Mistake>. well come <laughs> on 
<laughs> no, it's true. Those are ill-advised activities. A heroin addict traveling with trash bags of cereal. I would almost rather that than try to catch a fucking alligator or coyote or whatever. <laughs> or same difference. <laughs> no, difference, difference. Difference, difference. Not same difference. I'm not in the business of trying to catch any of those, any of that. Well, for those who are keeping count at home, I am also in love with Kyle Kraft. So, <laughs> I love him. The lesbian who loves Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> the lesbian who loves men. It's just, I just fall for these guys and then go home to my beautiful girlfriend. It's wonderful. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> um, oh, you know what I liked actually too? I keep having little postscripts. Hmm. But I liked how you described that. Kyle in his velvet suit and <laughs> Cowboy Boots looks more like he just walked right off a poster. He does. And now I like to picture that poster up on your wall. <laughs> like, if that poster existed, I would put it up on my it wall. It should be like with maybe a, like a bright blue background and then his, you know, like he's just standing in the middle of it and says like, Kyle Kraft. I want there to be like kind of like a, suit. like a 3D poster. Like, you know how the, in like the AHA video, he does like the... Oh, that just like chill for a second on this <laughs> and follow me okay so he reaches towards her and yeah, like pulls yeah. her in like if there's That's a way to get an dream. image <laughs> you're like poster but interactive where he's reaching I out i was gonna keep in. going okay. but i'm just blushing too much so interrupting I'm stop. i'll stop interrupting he also schooled you on cowboy boots didn't he oh he did yeah because i had been taking some <laughs> Long story short, or long story not explained, I was taking some country western dance classes and um, was telling Kyle about them and was commenting on his boots. And he looked at me, he was like, oh, no, these aren't dance boots. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK. You're like, my mistake. <laughs> so sorry. So sorry about that. <laughs> you would never dance in this kind of cowboy boot. Oh, oh it's so good. Um, how about the next time on the Sub Pop podcast? Oh, this is, I'm not, I'm, I can't take credit for this. I'm like, pretty excited about this. Yeah. We, Guys, we're going to have Tad Talks on our next podcast. Yes. My favorite thing Alyssa has said. Is that even okay to month. say? I'm sorry, Tad. But Tad Doyle from the seminal sub pop grunge band Tad. Yes. Made time for Arwen at his home. He invited, invited me to his you home. to his home. His wonderful wife offered me a popsicle he got me a sparkling water and i sat there and talked to tad doyle about music and he made me cry twice but not out of cruelty no god no <laughs> Let's he's be clear. so he's so sweet and he was just so thoughtful and in the interview he just he describes music in a way that i, f I often feel people talking about music can be trite and we try not to do that on this podcast we try not to be i don't know cliche cliche yeah. yeah and boring in talking about it but never we couldn't be <laughs> impossible actually <laughs> well we try <laughs> um but tad talks about music and his relationship with music in this way that is so i guess like warmly intense oh that it's just really lovely and like I don't know maybe I was just hyper emotional that day but there was just like tears streaming down my face listening to him talk about it because he was so genuine yeah and you could tell that like disarmingly he, so almost absolutely yeah and that with every fiber of his being he he has a deep like love of music and it really does move him anyway we'll get more into that next episode but that and we talked to Beach House yeah and Beach House was such a good example we talked about this kind of at length with cl about clipping but uh -huh. they were another good example of a very busy band having almost zero time and still managing to squeeze us in for a little bit yeah. come into our murder closet and talk to us about pie eating contests and other such greatness steely dan pie eating contests <laughs> love it all um, but so i also really love that we get to show um like beach house and tad in one episode Hell yeah. That's so good. Yeah, it's a good spectrum of sub-pop. Yes. It feels good. So yeah. that's next episode. But today on the podcast, you heard music from Mud Honey, of course, as well as Slater Kinney, Helio Sequence, Blitz and Trapper, The Thermals, Kyle Craft, The Shins, and The Fruit Bats. You know what I love about this list of bands? Tell me, Alyssa. They're all from Portland. I actually didn't know that. Sub-pop <laughs> bands from Portland. And I, let me just tell you another postscript. I got schooled when I sent out an email to the staff, like, which, and I have these bands, who am I forgetting? Oh it started God. this, it like, forever. never ending. 
Well, it did end, but an uh, embarrassing list of ones where I was like, oh, no, no, I knew that. Wait, I forgot. I know I know that they're from Portland. Okay, yes, you're right, you're right. So it got, it was actually kind of inadvertently a team building exercise because it really brought people out of the woodwork to get if on the right email. If by team building, the, <laughs> the exercise is getting mad at Alyssa. Being like, God, Alyssa, I can't believe you don't know that. So In- Indignant at Alyssa. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty excited. I like this little. I like this theme here. So check out our playlist. Yeah, check out our Sub Pop Portland playlist. This is not all of the Portland bands. This is just some of them. Some of them. Maybe we'll list them all. Yeah, maybe. Or some of them. <laughs> and then you. I just don't want to. Oh, we can get the comments again. then. You guys can comment at us, at me, at you, at us on social media and tell us what we forgot. We're there. Because I'm sure I did. Because that's what I do. You should like find us things. on Twitter. We have We do something. stuff on there and Facebook. Yeah. We've got like a whole 600 followers. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And Sub Pop FM for all your Sub Pop podcast needs. Mm-hmm. The and show notes. show notes from Stuart Fletcher. Yeah, you should you should really check out um, links to some Kyle Craft stuff. And then, again, all of the essays that Hutch has written and some of his stand-up. Because it's pretty great. And then thanks to the staff and bosses at Sub Hop and Hardly Art and thanks to you dear listener or possible listeners yes <laughs> okay I bye. know wait no <laughs> I was just gonna say thanks to Dana and Kim I feel like they're the two people I know that always listen oh really yeah. hi so thanks guys okay bye there it just feels a little like oh you're right like hmm, whatever <laughs>